You know the sound. We've all heard it before. The bashing sounds of the helmets, the microphones catching the hard hits, and many more sounds that are too painful to describe. You know, there is an array of problems that stayed on my conscience with me and millions of other people related who are involved with football. Whether they are observing the game from afar or on the sidelines playing with their team. But the one problem I have with football is the safety regu regulations involving the players, usually relating to injury, either major or minor. The NFL, NCAA, and even high school has been changing, has been slowly changing the rules and bumping up the protection of the players. But it is not enough to help the players be immune from injury. I have some ideas that can help revitalize a problem that have been, has been haunting football players for years. First, I would like to have all the football teams to have more protection to the helmets. For example, a company in Seattle, Washington, called Vices, generated a very durable helmet called the Vices Zero One. The Vices Zero One lessens the force of blows to the head to head to the head by offering four layers of protection. There's an outer layer that deforms to absorb shock and then rebounds a layer of polymer columns that move in multiple directions to reduce force, a hard inner shell to prevent skull fractures and brain bleeds, and a layer of memory fo foam for comfort. An amazing fact of this helmet is that at least a dozen NFL teams and more than 20 NCAA squads are using this, but we want all teams to use this helmet because it is not cheap to football programs. Hopefully, this helmet can help greatly prevent what I believe is the most serious football-related injury, which is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. Some of the symptoms of CTE include depression, dementia, and other Alzheimer's-like symptoms. In 2015, researchers from Boston University confirmed that 87 out of 91 retired football players had CTE mostly resulting from concussion, so we really need to put a stop to these hard hits. Another thing I would like all the football programs to change is the rules that we are not putting much effect to any of the players. For example, have more strict policies on concussion protocol for football so doctors do not have to constantly rely on the instant replay to find a diagnosis and just take the player out of the game and check, them th check him themselves. The concussion protocol was established in 2009 and has been adjusted for the last seven years. The most common symptoms for, from the concussion protocol is any loss of consciousness, slow to get up following a hit to the head, like may include secondary contact with the plane surface, motor coordination slash balance problems, which include stumbles, trips and falls, slow and labored movement, blank or vacant look, disorientation, for example, unsure of where he is on the field or location of the bench, clutching of head after contact, visible facial injury in combination with any of the above. But the NFL still does not take this protocol seriously. For example, on January 17th, 2018, Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton received a crushing hit from New Orleans Saints defensive tackle David Onyemata and found out later it was a concussion on the Panthers sideline in their medical tent of their locker room. And instead of keeping Newton on the sideline, they put him back on the field because he passed a concussion medical test. So we need to strengthen the policy so no one will be injured constantly or worse permanently. The NFL actually has a five-step process to see the player and test if he can play, which we need to take more seriously. First, rest and recovery, which is defined as until a player returns to the baseline level of signs and symptoms in neurological examination. Only limited stretching and balance activities are recommended. Electronics, social media, and team meetings are all to be avoided. Second, light aerobic exercise. The NFL recommends 10 to 20 minutes on a stationary bike or treadmill without resistance training or weight training. The cardiovascular activity is monitored by an athletic trainer to determine if there is any recurrent concussion signs or symptoms. Third, continued aerobic exercise and introduction of strength training. 
Increased duration and intensity of aerobic exercise will with strength training added. An athletic trainer will supervise to watch for recurrent concussions, signs, or symptoms. Fourth, football-specific activities. The cognitive load of playing football will be added and players will participate in non-contact activities for the, the typical duration of a full practice. Fifth, full football activity slash clearance. A player returns to full participation in practice, including contact without restriction. Another rule I would like to change is the targeting rule. And if you do not know what that rule is, targeting is limited to cases of illegal contact to an opponent's head or neck area. We need to make sure that does not happen again by suggesting the targeting an ejection penalty to being simply kicked off the team if they did it on purpose. What I want all of you to learn from this is hopefully convince several football programs to listen to this talk and figure out a way or ways to make football safer. Come on, safety is the number one rule and number one priority of football and even every sport. Thank you.